Now let's talk about turning and something called coordinated flight. With a few exceptions, such as uh, an aircraft doing aerobatics and sometimes maneuvers that combat aircraft use, generally airplanes turn in such a way that they maintain what we call coordinated flight. And this just means zero side slip. So zero velocity along the lateral axis of the aircraft. So this requires using, in general, the elevator, ailerons, and rudder all simultaneously. So before we figure out exactly how you achieve coordinated flight, it's always good to ask why is this useful? Why bother? Well, there's two main reasons. One has to do with the fact that humans are in aircraft most of the time. It has to do with occupant comfort. Basically, in coordinated flight, the sum of the gravitational and centrifugal forces always acts towards the floor of the aircraft. So there's no apparent change in the direction of the force that the occupants feel during the term. From the aerodynamic perspective, there's also important efficiency reasons why to use coordinated turns. And that's because side slip creates extra drag. And you can easily visualize why this is. If there's a component of velocity in the direction uh, that is perpendicular to the flight direction, then that velocity will essentially see the fuselage of the aircraft as a large blunt body, and that will create lots of extra drag um, with no associated benefit. So hopefully I've convinced you that coordinated turns are a good thing to do. So now let's look at how they're executed. Well, the key step is that we actually start by rolling the aircraft. And that, of course, is done using the ailerons. So if we start off with our aircraft, with the tail, and there's our wing. This is looking nose on at the aircraft. The elevator will be deflected, or sorry, aileron is deflected, so one's up and one's down. Note again, these always move in opposite directions. So if we look at this one from the side, uh, it'll look something like this. And the other one will look something like this. And I'll shade in the part that is the aileron, which is the part that's deflected at the back of the airfoil. So this one, you can see essentially the camber has increased. And so there's going to be an increase lift and drag. And here, effectively, the camber is decreased. So there's now a decreased lift and drag.
So this differential lift force will create a rolling moment. So if I copy this drawing, draw a few more details onto it. This will basically create a moment in this direction. Because you can imagine the lift force here maybe is that large, and the lift force here is that large. And so the difference between the two effectively creates a moment. So the aircraft starts to roll. So what are the consequences of roll? Well, if now our aircraft is rolling, and we still have our elevators, our ailerons, sorry again, deflected. We need to think of the wings in 3D to really understand the consequences of this roll. So I'm going to draw a perspective view of the wings. I'm just going to omit the fuselage of the aircraft from the picture for clarity. So it's going to look something like this. And the cutout for the aileron. Here's the center line of the aircraft. So there's the wing, and this aileron is deflected downward, and this aileron is deflected upward. So the flight velocity is forward in this direction. And there's some roll rate around this axis. Now, if these dashed lines are parallel to the flight velocity, because of the rolling action, the relative velocity that each wing sees is different. So this wing is moving relatively into the wind like this, up with an upward component. And this one's moving with a downward component. So the incoming flow onto this wing has an upward component, and it's opposite for the other wing. So now, recall that by definition, lift is the force normal to the incoming flow. So, if I draw this picture again, copy it over. Just to clean this up, let me erase that. Okay. So, now here, now the lift, is acting this way, where this is the vertical direction. So there's a component here that is a forward facing component of lift. And here, the lift acts in this direction, where again, here's vertical. And so there's a backward facing component of the lift. Now, if we look down on this from a top down view, we can see 
just looking at the lift force, there's a forward component here and a backwards moment here. And clearly this creates a yawing moment. So this is what we call adverse yaw. Essentially, this is a tendency for the aircraft to rotate in the opposite direction to the intended turning direction. But that's not all. It gets worse. Other forces are at play, which also contribute to this adverse yaw. One of these is profile drag. Uh, what we call pressure drag, uh, basically. And so the downward deflected aileron increases the effect of camber, as I mentioned. Uh, and this generally increases the drag. It increases the lift, but simultaneously increases drag. And the opposite occurs for the upward deflected aileron. So the net effect is an increase, uh, a, a drag imbalance, which adds to the adverse yaw. So again, if we look at our wing from above, these ailerons, there's a smaller drag on this side and a larger drag on this side. And again, the net difference between the two creates yet another yawning moment in the same direction as the effect of the roll. Finally, there's also an effect from induced drag. Now, induced drag is this drag due to the generation of lift on a finite span wing that we're going to talk about in more detail when we talk about 3D wings. But basically, at the initiation of the roll, Briefly, there's a higher lift on the upper wing, the one that I've shown here um, on the right, which increases uh, the induced drag and also contributes then to that adverse yaw. But this is only during the initiation of the roll, not steadily during the roll as the other two effects are.